today's seminar. And thank you to being, <laughs> for being here because it's uh, <laughs> a Sunday evening. Uh, I'm not used to do that kind of thing in, in English, so uh, I might sleep in French and pardon my French. <laughs> uh, I'll do my best. So today uh, and this morning, I'm, I'll talk about the, the Apple II and the demo scene because the, the Apple II is an often overlooked computer on the scene, and uh, but there, there, there are a lot of good news. So let's start because I have a lot of things to say and not very much time. So uh, first, who am I? I'm part of the French Touch demo group. Uh, it exists uh, since uh, 2014, so we are going to have our 10-year uh, anniversary uh, this year. And uh, the, mem the founder is Greek. Um, I am Fenarin Arsa and Cyril Lambin, if some people know, know me, and I'm part mainly of the Atari ST scene. Uh, but I started back, to, I started to program on the Apple II because it was the computer I had when I was a kid. So I did, I did oh, sorry, this is not working very well. Uh, so I did my first release at Revision uh, five years ago. It was an Apple II release. So uh, I know that many people on the scene don't, don't know about the Apple II, so I'm going to do a very, very uh, quick story about the Apple II uh, and about the Apple II family, because this is a, a family of computers and not one computer like the Amiga or other computers. So uh, the first one was in 1977, the original Apple II, but that's not the main computer you're going to see demos on. Uh, the most successful computers, the most successful Apple II is the Apple II Plus and the Apple II E that were released in 1977 and 1983. The Apple II Plus is basically the same model and the Apple II E has some, has some more uh, enhancements. The Apple II C is a compact version and the Apple II GS is an amazing computer. It was released in 1986, uh, and it's a 16-bit computer. So there's a lot of demos on it uh, that were released in, in 80s and 90s. Uh, but I won't talk about it because it's a completely different computer, and there's a lot, a lot of things to say about it, and I don't know that much the Apple II GS. And then many more models, and the um, end of production was in 1995, so it's, it was very late. So the computers, the models we are going to focus on, and if you do demos, uh, that's the models you want to focus on, is the 2 plus, the 2E, and the 2C. Here are the tech specs you get out of the box because you can add a lot of features. And this is based on the 6502 at one megahertz. So like the uh, mini computers of the time, like the C64, I think the Thing 20 maybe, and the Atari XL, and et cetera, et cetera. So a lot of, uh, of computers. And uh, the Apple II Plus has 48K of RAM, can be expanded to 64K at least. And the Apple IIe has 64K, can be expanded natively to 128K. And the Apple IIc has this RAM uh, natively. Both models exist in NTSC or PAL. This, those are different models. Um, what you get when you get when you buy an Apple II, uh, you get keyboard, composite output, joystick input, internet speaker, and on the big models, not the compact ones, the tape in and tape out. That's all. That's all you get. It's very few input outputs. And uh, on Apple IIc, they integrated a lot of stuff, in, including the floppy disk drive. And what you get as a coder, <laughs> uh, quite nothing actually. You get no time loss, no DMA, uh, no video acceleration, so no sprites, no no hard score, no things, no nothing actually, no color, uh, and the frame buffers are very very um, strange, so they're not liner. You you have to use a lot of lookup tables, that kind of thing, and the color is very complex to to understand. There is no audio chipset. But the good news is that you get double buffering in all video modes. That's quite incredible for a 1977 uh, computer. And you get very interesting routes in ROM, including a 2D vector uh, routing. Uh, again, it's a 77 computer, but you get 2D vectors, which is called a uh, shape table or uh, shape of form. I don't know. I don't know the real, uh, the real, uh, real time. And the 2E and the 2C, they have uh, V-Sync-like features. It's not ex exactly the same. 
But the 2E, you can pull V blank, and the 2C, you can pull the V sync, or you can use, you can use an interrupt. What was the big, big uh, feature of the Apple II uh, was, of course, the expansion cards. So you, it's like a PC, really. Uh, you can add any expansion card you want. Uh, and they're called peripheral cards, officially, but just, uh, just like cards. And the limit is your imagination. So you have uh, the, the old card that existed at the time, and uh, you have the new cards that people do. But basically, you can put like a Raspberry, a Raspberry Pi on a card and use the Apple II as like a console. So you can do that. So when I say the limit is your imagination, that, that's true. OK, so if there's seven slots. I think I have a disk a list there. So you, the cards you can find from the 70s and 80s are the floppy disk, serial parallel, modem mouse, RAM expansion. RAM expansion, a lot of cards. And CPU acceleration, so you can have uh, 4 megahertz CPU or 8 megahertz CPU. Uh, you have uh, additional CPU card, so the Z80 card to run CPM initially, but uh, you can do whatever you want. A 68,000 card. When you run those cards, the um, 6502 is stopped. And you have video cards and debug cards, you know, to make saves of your games. Uh, so that existed, and a lot of homemade cards as well. Uh, so you have modern cards as well. So uh, the last one I saw is a 20 megahertz accelerator with PCM sound. Uh, there's a video card for modern TVs with a lot of modes and uh, CF card uh, hard drives, etc., etc. So you have a lot of stuff. And the most common cards that exist that we, you will find in, in one Apple II is the disk two card, which is uh, the floppy disk drive. For the, so the deep floppy disk drive, so you can put, you can plug two drives on this card, and it's basically in every Apple II. And a lot of Apple IIs also have the RAM expansion. Uh, there's a lot of them, and uh, so you can expand to up to starting to 64K for the two plus and uh, 128K for the two E. Um, they're very cheap, so if you get an Apple II Plus, for example, you can buy an, uh, an expansion card for a few bucks. So please do that. <laughs> uh, I did a selection of, game, a selection of games uh, that's mostly to give you uh, a glimpse of what's possible with the Apple II, because uh, coders at the time of games, game coders, were very, very good. So uh, games are very optimized. Of course, you will recognize some classics. Uh, this is not the best game. This has the most technical games, in my point of view. So you get Code Shoplifter, which is interesting because it has um, <laughs> Super Benny with a vertical scroller. Cavern Creatures with the vertical scroller. Stellar 7 for the 3D. Might and Magic for the adventure, and you can see the white colors. Bandits for the sprites. Droll for the horizontal scroll. Amazing game. Karateka, horizontal scroll plus sound. This one is very demo-like. demo, demo -like. Horizon V, or 5, I don't know. With a lot of sequence, a tunnel sequence as well. Could have been a demo. This is Elite, of course, with the 3D. Very fast 3D. And Prince of Persia, which is the best game, technically speaking, on the Apple II, and maybe the best game of all games on the Apple II. Uh, Prince of Persia uh, works only on 2E. But all, all other games, I think, work on 2 plus, And most of games run off 2 plus, actually. So, uh, so that was ga that was game uh, games. Uh, let's talk about the scene. Was there a scene? Yeah, that's not what I wanted to. We already saw that, please. Yeah, what about the scene? And there was a scene. I was a bit surprised to find that there was a lot of things, and sometimes the dates are not. We you cannot know the the real date, the, the real release date. So I found, uh, for example, a crack toe uh, that was listed in 82 on Pret, 
but we're not so sure. So I just moved it, <laughs> but there are some that we are, sh we are sure about. So this is the original, like the original demo in 78. It's like state of the art on the Apple II. This one is 81. So the first crack signature. This one I think is 82. So maybe the first crack to ever. And all the others are from 83, 84, 85. So you can find, you can see a lot of things. Of course, I think they got the inspiration from the C64. A lot of scrolls and effects. So yeah, there, there was a lot of things. How many of you have ever see, saw that? Already saw that? Only one, people, one person, okay. It's quite amazing. Uh, this was a, a sound. This one also. Very good sound. Thank you. And the next one are real intros and they were released in 92. With two, cha two channel sound. By French people. Already. So, in my opinion, it was, it's, it's quite amazing to see that in the early eight, nine, uh, 80s. And uh, on the Apple II, because after the 92 intros, there was like nothing for 20 years. So, the platform was completely uh, put on side on the scene, and nobody took, uh, took care about it. Um, I don't know why, but maybe that's because the Apple II was dying. Simply, and most of the people moved to the to the Amiga or to the PC. A lot of people actually moved to the PC because of the you know the card, the expansion stuff. It was the same on PC. So uh, yeah, it was there was nothing, and a lot of people, including me, considered that the, the Apple II was crap. So yeah, why not? Why doing demos on it? Uh, it's complex. Uh, this is the same again. I think I have uh, duplicate uh, videos. So modern development. Uh, how do we do that? I have a, a mic issue. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm going to try to fix that. OK. Um, how many of you are uh, developers on old school platforms? A few, a few, uh, a few, uh, few people. 65 or two developers? Okay, C64, I guess, maybe. Yeah, yeah C64, maybe Atari or Game Boy or whatever. Okay, uh, good news. There's good news and bad news. The good news, you're a 65 or 2 coder, you're, you're good, you're good. Because uh, everything on the Apple II is software-based. Everything. So if you're a good 65 or 2 coder, you won't have any... Okay, oh, okay, okay. Uh, so you won't have any issue to do things on the Apple II, really. Uh, a lot of source code and tools and routines are already available. Like at French Touch, for example, we release everything in JPL under JPL, so you can use uh, our code, you can release uh, stuff with our code. And that's how we think people will, will, start, will start doing things on this computer. If you're a musician, uh, you do tunes on AI or YM, like on ZX Spectrum or Atari ST or CPC, you're good, because we have uh, a YM player. Emulators are almost 100% accurate, almost. And there's a small but dynamic community. So you can ask questions, and we'll be glad to answer and to help you. Bad news, everything is software-based. So that means that unless you want to make a wild port based on a specific card you want to use, for example, uh, um, let's say a 20 mega CPU, if you do that, only the people that have that card <laughs> will be able to run your demo. But else you're stuck with the basic uh, hardware, which is very uh, basic. Uh, there's a lack, there's a real lack of cross dev graphic tools. So graphics, uh, you have to, artists have to use the original uh, software on the original machines. And 
Of course, uh, emulators fail when you do advanced tricks. <laughs> we like, we actually love to make emulators fail uh, at French Touch. And the biggest community is US-based, so I put that in bad news because uh, in the US, they don't really know, right now they know, they know about the demo scene, but they don't really care. So you'll get a, a lot of uh, feedback like, uh, why, do, why do you do demos, do games? Uh, we don't care about demos, that kind of stuff. So, and a lot of people are just users. So they won't help you, they will tell you false information. That's, so just trust the coders <laughs> and not the users. So that's uh, unfortunately uh, small bad news. Uh, for the code, you can use everything you, you want, anything you want for the 6502. So the best, the, the main assembler is called Merlin on the Apple II. Uh, we use Acme, but you can do C64, C whatever you want. We use VS Code and make files, and we have uh, Python scripts script to do flop, floppy images. For the music, we have a PT3 compatible tracker, but it's, it's quite slow. You can use any other tracker, and we do a YM conversion, and we can play anything. For graphics, like I said, there's not a lot of things. Graphics 2 uh, has a, uh, an Apple II mod, but not a lot of things available, unfortunately. Uh, we, use, uh, we target those computers, so the Apple IIe at 128K with Mockingboard, and the Apple IIc with Mockingboard, mostly PAL because it's easier for us. And the main compatibility issue we'll, you will have is between the 6502 and the 65CO2 because there's a small differences, especially when you do sync code, can be uh, tricky. And the VSync, but it's easier, easy to, to overcome. I will talk about uh, small challenges, small challenges you have to overcome when you do uh, demos on the Apple II. The first one is sound. You heard that there was sound on some demos, but, um, sorry. Uh, <laughs> What do you get? You get uh, quite nothing. Uh, you generate a click and that's it. Uh, it's even worse than on PC. So that's the actual, the actual speaker that you get in the computer. Uh, if you want to make like digits or very complex sound, you have to use a lot of tricks. It takes a lot of CPU time and you have to interleave your code with animation. So it's very, if you heard the game, you, the, the sound is very choppy because of the animation. That's, that's, the, that's why. There's a game, if you find, uh, look for a game that's called Galaxian, you have actually samples into the game. So this is quite incredible, this is a technical achievement as well. But you can do demos with that. Yeah, I'll be delighted to see, to, to see demos with the sound. What we use is the mocking board, it's a sound card. So some people say we are cheating, but really, first it was released in 1983. So it's an old card, and it's supported by some games. Also, is it really cheating? Like on PC, don't you use cards? <laughs> like sound card, video card. On Amiga, I'm sorry, uh, did an Amiga with 6860 uh, was released? I uh, don't never heard about that. So, no, it's like, uh, I'm, I'm joking, but of course it's not cheating on the Apple II, you can use many cards. And this one, we use this one especially because it was released at, at the time. So, we feel like it's less cheating than other cards. Uh, it's available for all Apple IIs. You have six, uh, six channels because there are two AY8910. Uh, so one for left, one for right. And you get two VIAs. So the good news is that you get four timers, which is uh, quite uh, <laughs> good news for demos. And you can have more than one booking board. So for example, Ultima uh, had um, intro music with 12 channels, with two booking boards. Uh, so, like I said, 6502 players are available. I did a full video on it. Uh, it has uh, English subtitles, so please have a look at this video. I did a full, a full talk about it. Next challenge, graphics. It's simple. Graphics on the Apple II. Not, it's not simple, but I won't be able to explain it uh, in detail because it's uh, quite complex. Um, oh. I'm, I misclick every time. Okay, uh, those are the uh, mods available on the Apple II. So the first three on the Apple II Plus and the six on the Apple IIe and to C. Uh, why? Because the, the lower part, you know, the last three, you need two memory banks and it's not available on the two Plus. 
So you get text, a low resolution, which is very low, 40 by 48. It's actually, I never, I didn't explain that, but it's actually an alternate char set to the text mode. Uh, the high res, which is used by almost every game, all games you, you've seen, you've seen were done in this mode. And you have 80 column, double low res, and double high res, which is really the 80 column mode applied to uh, graphics. Uh, the buffer size is from 1K to 16K. So <laughs> 16K with a 6502 at running at one megahertz, I wish you good luck, but it's possible. And the colors uh, are from six to 16, but it's, uh, I'm gonna explain that. Explain that. And uh, there are of course a lot of mods with video cards. For example, I have color text with a video card in my Apple II, but it's not standard. So for example, this is the low, low res mod in for, uh, plus, plus text on the bottom. This is, this is called mixed mode. It's a uh, standard on the Apple II. You can mix uh, four lines of text with graphics. So this is uh, print, the print shop, if uh, <laughs> uh, people know the print shop. And what you need to understand for color is that the Apple II is not a, a color computer. This is all a trick. Uh, there's no color DSE, no palette, no color modulator inside the machine, except for PAL version, but you, because you need a, a color the, the, the Apple II is an NTSC machine, basically. So uh, what it does, it generates a monochrome video signal, and the monochrome video signal is uh, uh, 560 by 192 for the display area, and it just sends that. It's a monochrome uh, signal, and it tells the TV, yeah, it's color. And that's the TV that does the color. The, tele the demodulator just kicks in and just say, oh, okay, it's color, let's demodulate that. But it was a monochrome signal, but it, it's transforming color. So you have, uh, you can have different uh, rendering uh, based on the TV you use. Some games took advantage of that. This is how it works. Uh, again, I won't uh, get into the details, but uh, for four dots, you get one NTSC chroma cycle, so you get four, uh, 16 colors, because it's one, zero, one, one. And those are the 16 colors you can get. Uh, it's actually 15 colors because gray one and gray two are the same. So you have only one gray, so 15 colors. Uh, and those, those colors are yeah, not very well chosen, but actually they didn't choose it because it's all the NTSC uh, decode trick. Uh, also, not all pixels, you cannot change every pixel individually in all modes. The only mode that allows that is uh, double high res. Uh, all modes, you have like um, uh, a degraded uh, quality degraded resolution. So you, so for example, in AGR, you will address a two pixels by two pixels. What we call one pixel in AGR is actually two dots. And so, in somehow, you don't create graphics made of pixels, but you create a video signal. So, I, I, like I said, it's like assembly for graphics. Uh, and sometimes, for some effects, uh, you can just consider that, uh, for example, this is uh, four dots is one color pixel. So you will get some issues, but uh, it works. It could look okay. This is one example. So this is a low resolution with a four line of text. Uh, so the final resolution, like you can see on the right, uh, is uh, 460 by 192, but the low resolution is uh, 40 by 48. So you can address that only as blocks of 14 by four. You cannot change every pixel individually in this mode. And those are the colors you can get. Of course, you see that there's a lot of interference between colors when you change colors. Uh, games, in games, the final re resolution is uh, the same, but you can only address pixels of uh, 280 width. So uh, I did not have put, uh, you know, the pattern, uh, the pattern um, picture, the monochrome picture, but uh, you have six colors. If you have only 280, you would have four colors because you have two pixels by, uh, per uh, intensity chroma cycle. So we will have only four combinations, but you have a delay trick in IGR uh, uh, that I will explain just after that. So this is an example of what I said when I said uh, it's like assembly for graphists. So you generate a, sig a signal here and you can see that the color doesn't start and stop exactly at the pixel uh, boundary. It starts and stops when the signal starts and stops. So 
<laughs> so sometimes you can change colors and uh, your sprite is going to wobble or to shift a bit. You can see that in games. For example, if you have a little, uh, one logo that changed color and the logo just shifts a bit when you change color. And this is the kind of issues you're going to run into. So when you mix, you change color, you get interferences, uh, you get different width, and if you have uh, four consecutive black dots, you get black, and if you have four consecutive white dots, you get white. So that's, that's all a mess, to be honest. And this is AGR, again, I, I cannot explain that in my time, but in this time, but uh, in memory, you have uh, seven bits for one pixel, so a double pixel, and the uh, highest bit delays the signal for a bit, so you have more colors available. That also means that in the frame buffer, every byte is seven pixels. So if you want to put one, uh, to, to put one dot somewhere on screen, you have to divide by seven, which of course is very convenient on 6502. It's not, of course, it's a joke. So you have to use a lookup table. Okay. <coughs> the kind of color clash you're gonna, going to have, uh, the, you have like the, Seven, the seventh bit, like the color clash, because you change the, the shift, and you have the black and white color clash as well, when you, when you change color. So good luck with that. Um, of course, that's why when you see uh, graphics, uh, like title screens on games, you have like big, um, big uh, black and white uh, lines around colors, that's to avoid that. A few examples, this is Angry Birds uh, on double low resolution. In composite, it, work, it's, uh, it uh, looks better in RGB. So it's 80 by, uh, 50, by 48, sorry. This is uh, my own demo, the, the graph was made by MAID, and uh, it runs on RGB, this one, and uh, you have 16 color in double low res. Double low res is actually um, a very good resolution to work on because you have like I said, uh, for, uh, 80 by 48. So it's very interesting because you start getting something with that. Some double high resolution screens uh, for games because I don't have any, I think, in demos in color. So Prince of Persia is very famous for uh, its title screen, of course. Uh, you can see uh, if, you were, if, you <laughs> if you have a look closely that the pixels change size that the blue pixels are tiny and the yellow pixels are uh, wider because of what I, I just explained. Uh, so, of course, uh, Jordan McNair did a very, very good job of doing that <laughs> in this mod. And California Games, which is actually quite a, a good game on the Apple II, and it, it's in full DIGR. So you have 16 colors in, in the, uh, the whole game. And you can use converters. So this is a converter by Lucasi. Uh, for NTSC uh, composite, so you can get pretty good results, actually. Uh, the two video software tricks you need to know on Apple II, and I will be very fast, I think I'm already quite done. So uh, there are only two tricks that I know of. Uh, any video mode change is immediate, so you can change uh, when you do change. It's a soft switch, you just plug into memory and the video mode change. It takes two cycles. Uh, and if you do that in H blank, it's invisible. Does that, mean, that means you can change mode every line. You can have a line in text mode, one line in graphic mode, etc., etc. If you do that during display, it's possible we do that. Um, it's invisible if there is no graphic data, else you will have like uh, interferences because it takes two cycles, uh, two, two chips are not uh, synchronized. And the thing is that uh, most emulators don't see, don't, uh, show that interference thing, so you will believe that it's clean, but it's not actually on the real machine. So there's only one or one emulator, I think, that does that. It's uh, Acura Pearl, but it's going well, it's uh, currently working progress. And maybe another one, I think. Uh, on 2 plus, you can do vSync by using vapor lock. Uh, basically, you snoop on the data bus, and you can read what the video scanner just read. So you can put data on the screen or in memory, and you can vsync with that. What we can, what you do when you do vsync? Yeah, uh, that's a trick I, I didn't explain in my slides. Uh, 
for uh, our demos, since we use uh, the Mockingboard, we at the demo initialization, we, we find the vSync and we put a timer. And then we have vSync for all computers. And of course, you can use sync code, uh, and all cycles are available to the CPU. There's no DMA, no whatever, so uh, you have the full uh, CPU available to you. Any questions just after that? But now I'm going to talk about the rebirth of the scene on the Apple II. Uh, it started in uh, 2011 with that. Uh, it, was released as, it was released at Kansas Fest, which is a big, big Apple II event uh, in the US. And uh, it's only that graph, uh, I think, I guess it was code generated. And so, yeah, that's the first uh, real demo, uh, new school demo, maybe, <laughs> I don't know. And I made a selection of uh, some demos. Again, it's not everything that exists, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of demos. Uh, you have like seven or eight pages on Poet, which was not the case two, two, two years ago. So I'm quite <laughs> happy, to, I'm glad, glad to see that. And uh, let's uh, have a look. There's sound as well. So this is uh, a 2012. A pretty good idea, actually. French Touch started in uh, this year, in 2014, with that kind of effects. So it's just uh, animations loaded in one. You can see what you can do in double low res. It's quite, uh, it looks good, actually. I love this one. It's a full uh, cycle accurate demo on 2 plus with the vapor lock uh, trick. And so you can see just after that that uh, there's mini there's mini mode. You have low res on the bottom the bottom part, high res, and then text. So you have three modes with music We're on the mocking board. Goblin Ish released that in 2019. That's when the seniors like me uh, started to. Turn back to the Apple II, like, yeah, we can do things with this machine, uh, let's start. This is my own release, here at Revision. I'm very proud of this color, but it takes all the CPU. And some dot, and there's a roto zoom dot just after that. I, I do better right now, now I can do better than that. But, uh, that was my first EC502 demo. and the roto zoom with the graph, the graph I made. This is low resolution. And double low res plus 80 columns. This is French Touch, it's all sync code. So you, you, there's many, many changes by line. So you have like uh, high, high resolution and low resolution, which is uh, full black. So you can get that. And we also switch pages to get the small effect in the background. It be check does a lot of things uh, and they released uh, this uh, 3D demo, which is quite uh, fast actually. It's also compatible with accelerators. Do a lot of a lot of things. Uh, AB check. So you have the color clash everywhere. <laughs> you can you can see it everywhere. Digidream is uh, our release. Uh, we play uh, an Atari ST tune with digital dreams, drums. Sorry, digital drums. Using Mockingbird time timers. And this is a very an amazing release by Samar Productions, the 664 group, group coming to the Apple II. And of course, they come with uh, all their design skills. 
which makes a, a real difference, of course. Also, the music is great. I think they use the, the, the PT3 um, player, so they could have more CPU time, like 20 CPU times more with our player. So the, the, the artist used only two colors to avoid clash. And this is Desire, which makes a lot, I mean a lot of uh, size coding. So this one is one kilobyte. A lot of, uh, of, the, of them are released at uh, Love Bytes. And this is the 2D vector forms I was talking about in one. So it just calls this route to render that. It does rotation, 2D rotations. And the last one is actually an 8-byte compo. 8 bytes by desire. This is the smallest you can you can make, I think, on the Apple II. So uh, I'm I think I'm out of time. Maybe I don't know. If you have questions, or I can. If you don't have questions, I have another hidden part, but. Uh, 12 minutes, okay. Questions or hidden part? Okay. Okay, okay. So I said before that you do only software tricks. Yeah. Okay. I was not at the beginning, so maybe my question is not okay. Uh, but in fact, I see a bit of hardware tricks when you are changing the modes or, or, or things, th things like that. Sorry? I do not understand. What do I need to do? It works, yeah, it works. Um, Sorry. So, anyway, you say that there is no hardware trick because there, there was no research to find hardware tricks? Yeah. Or because it does not exist? It seems strange. No, the no, there has been research, research because all the tricks we use are already, were already known at the time. Like the uh, vapor lock and mode change, they were all known at the time. There's a Bible of the Apple II, which is called Understanding the Apple II and Understanding the Apple IIe by Jim Sather. And if you read that book, you have all the electronics uh, like um, explained. And uh, there's nothing to, I, I think there's nothing to, to find, maybe, maybe. But uh, to be honest, when we find a new trick, uh, we opened uh, that book and uh, it was already there. So <laughs> it's just that we didn't read the book really well. Yeah, that's not, uh, not a lot of, uh, to, to find. I, I'm, I'm from the Atari ST, so uh, that's the first try thing I tried, I tried making the chipset uh, uh, crash or whatever, but uh, yeah, no, it doesn't work. Okay, because on Amazon CPC, we still found things. Yeah, maybe. So, to be honest, maybe, but it's very, very basic computer. And at the time when you had an issue, you put a card, a new card, and that it was done. So yeah, it's very, very basic. Okay, thanks. But uh, if you find one, please let us, let us know, because I would be interested, of course. Any other questions? So, okay, so let's go to the, to the next challenge. Loading, loading is fun on the Apple II, maybe you've heard about, that, about it, because uh, on the Apple II, uh, there's no controller, there's no, no disk controller, even with the two, disk two card, there's no disk controller, the 6502 is the controller. So what does th that what does that mean? It means that uh, when you load data, you do that in cycle accurate code, so it's sync code basically, um, because the floppy disk doesn't wait. So you you read you you look for um, sync bytes, and then when you find sync bytes, you have to read a byte every 32 cycles. If you miss one byte, you all your data is corrupt. So doing uh, animation and music uh, while loading is tricky. Uh, you cannot use interrupts when you read a sector or a sector header. 
And but the good the good news uh, is that since there's there's no disk controller, you have uh, the full control over what is read or uh, written on the disk. So that means uh, you can make your own disk format. I have an example here. So on the left, you have a standard uh, DOS or ProDOS disk. So it's a 16 sector uh, format. Uh, you can see that the sectors are not aligned because it's a soft, uh, soft uh, format. So there's no sector zero detection or track zero detection. When you boot up an Apple II, you hear the, the floppy disk drive going ta 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 ta. It's because it just uh, calls back the head 40 times and it, it, it hits track zero 40 times to be sure it's on track zero. And this one is a protected game. It's shoplifter. So you can see it's a mess. And there's even, I think there's even uh, half tracks, uh, maybe quarter tracks, I don't, I'm not sure. Because you can, you also move the head when you change uh, the track. So you have to, to um, enable and disable a uh, magnet to make the rotor turn, uh, turn around. So you can just stop the, the head between tracks. So you have half tracks and quarter tracks. So you can do whatever you want. So uh, what exists uh, with, uh, um, oh, I have a bug here, but whatever. So the first one I'd like to see, to, to show you is um, this one. I hope the Wi-Fi is going to work. So this, it's Bad Apple on Apple II by Wiz of Infobia. And uh, basically what it said, first of all, it's, uh, Bad Apple in 288 bytes, uh, kilobytes, sorry. So it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's quite the challenge. And uh, the, the animation is timed with the disk loading. So it, re it reads one sector and then renders one frame, reads one sector, or one track, I don't know, because you can read whole tracks uh, as well, like on Amiga, you can do that. Uh, so it's pretty, it's pretty good, but uh, it didn't stop uh, here. He did this demo, which was already here as well. So he had an issue is that the, the main issue when you do that with music is that the music is mostly, most of time is at 50 hertz, but the, the disc is, is um, turning at uh, 300 RPMs. So when you start uh, interrupting with the disc read, we, you will have sectors interrupted by the music and it will be the same sectors every time. So you have this issue, so what he did is he slowed down the music in the tracker and uh, replayed it, uh, or accelerated it and re slowed it down uh, for the replay to 40 hertz so he can read a full sector between uh, music interrupts. And this is not 3D, this is, um, this is a, stream a stream video actually, a stream sprite. All, all parts of the lines have little sprites. So it's streamed for this, from disk. And the last one is uh, French Touch. This, this is not this one again. Okay. Yeah, fast loader from French Touch. And we use a 50 hertz, uh, a 50 hertz uh, music play. What we wanted to do is to make uh, something that we could use in a big demo. So we can just have a loading or not loading and use the same player. And what we do, when we did to achieve that is that we use a custom disk format. So it's a 32 sectors format instead, instead of 16 sectors format. So the sectors are, are smaller, so you can, we can load um, up to three sectors between uh, music plays. And it works uh, pretty well. And that's it. I'm done with my presentation. If you have any, uh, any questions, again, that's the time. No questions. I was that good. <laughs> OK. Yeah, one question. Yeah, you need to turn it on, yeah, I think. Turn, turn it on. Oh.
we have sound issues. You can find me on Mastodon Blue Sky Discord, and I did a page on my blog uh, with a lot of links to communities and Discord. You're welcome to come. We have a French Discord, but we have an English uh, ch uh, an English channel, and you we can speak English. And there's a lot. It has a big, big Slack uh, for the Apple II as well. Yes. So, sorry, I don't, I don't understand that. How do you do uh, handling the two different CPU options? Oh, Pal and NTSC, this is the question? Or not? No, uh, it's about the CPU. Ah, the CPU. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, well, it's same code uh, coded twice yeah. for the different in most of case, or uh, yeah. just going for the common denominator? Well, in most of cases, you don't, we don't have to to do anything because we don't use sync code in every demo. But uh, sometimes we do two different releases because it's easier. But we could also also use uh, like generated code or modified code to do that. But uh, yeah, the main issue is when you do sync code because you have uh, uh, some uh, instru instructions don't have the same execution time. Um, or we don't use those uh, instructions, that's also uh, uh, a way of doing that. But sometimes we do two releases. And the same way, sometimes we also do two releases between 2E and 2C. Because I have a 2C and Greek uh, uh, has uh, only a 2E. So sometimes it does things with the 2E, does a release, so I have to do another release for 2C. But it's only a small patch. Okay? Well, thank you. Thank you for coming. <laughs>